Today on the Save It For Parts channel, we have a mystery wrapped in an Axeman surplus price tag. I love going to Axeman surplus to pick up weird old electronics, parts for my other projects, wires, motors, arts and crafts supplies, basically anything I could possibly need for DIY stuff. And frequently they will have a mystery product, just something that you don't know what it is, they don't know what it is, it has no markings on it, um, and this is one of those products. It was uh, $5.95. It's basically a completely anonymous black box. There are no numbers, no letters, no model number, no maker name. There's nothing to identify this on here. All we know about it is that it's some kind of electronics device. It has antenna jacks on both sides, and it has a power jack, or what I'm assuming is a power jack with three wires, and it's got some cooling fins on the back. So I am assuming this is some kind of radio device because it has antenna connectors. I'm assuming it's some kind of amplifier because it has these cooling fins on it, so it probably generates some amount of waste heat. And I'm assuming it uses 12 volts DC, although with three wires here, I'm not 100% sure how that works. If one of these is like an ignition sense wire, there are some empty ports on this front panel that look like maybe serial ports. Um, this is about the size of a nine pin serial connector. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot else to say about this without cracking it open and seeing what's inside. I occasionally do videos like this where I just pick up a completely unknown product from Axeman if it's cheap enough and we dig into it to see what is it? What does it do? Can I use it for something? Now fortunately this is an old enough product that it uses regular Phillips screws to fasten everything together. No weird security bits this time, which I always appreciate. I would love if I could take apart and put together every piece of electronics with this one screwdriver. This is actually my favorite screwdriver. These days you basically have to buy a new custom screwdriver set every week because device manufacturers are coming out with some new stupid fastener every week. We're starting on what I assume is the bottom of the device. I, I really don't know what orientation this is supposed to go in. And inside here, it is still fairly anonymous. We actually have quite a bit of empty space here. It looks like something is supposed to mount into this. There is a, what looks like a data connector here, and this empty space lines up with these possibly serial port connectors. So. I bet there's a module that's supposed to fit in here and have accessory connectors out and then plug into the rest of the unit. Still fairly obscure in the back, just a metal cover, and we do have those uh, power inputs going into a screw terminal here. Let's take this side off. I think all these screws are basically the same, but I'm going to try keeping them with their respective cover just so we don't lose anything. All right, we definitely have a little more detail here. So we have actually some text on the board. Right here it says data radio. We have some kind of possibly a part number. And then we have some copyright info, 1999 from Data Radio Core. Um, so this is probably some kind of memory chip or processor. A couple other things in here. We have this shielded module. This might be an oscillator or some kind of radio chip under here that they want to have specially shielded. I haven't had much luck searching these part numbers and model numbers, but I did find out that Data Radio or Data Radio is a division of EF Johnson, which is a radio maker uh, here in Minnesota actually, or they were, I'm not sure where they are these days. And that kind of makes sense that Axeman would have a bunch of surplus EF Johnson or local manufacturer stuff when companies go out of business or they move or they just have surplus inventory that they don't want anymore. A lot of times that kind of stuff ends up at Axeman surplus. And I have seen quite a bit of EF Johnson stuff there before. Now, the basic idea of this is that it's a data radio, as the name would imply. This is used for stuff like SCADA, Systems Control Data Acquisition. I, I forget the acronym but basically this is for an industrial monitoring system or a business monitoring system. Anything from a fire alarm to a manufacturing process to a remote data logging site. Basically, if you are familiar with listening to software-defined radio or just scanning through the business band frequency, you will come across a lot of annoying robot data. and it's probably coming from something like this. It's just sending out serial data 
uh, telling some company that, hey, your fire alarm is fine, your water flow is fine, your chemical process is doing whatever it's supposed to do, or, hey, something's wrong, your temperature's too low, your uh, gyroscopes are out of balance. And yes, there is supposed to be basically a serial terminal block that goes in here, connects down to the radio, and has RS-232 ports on the front. And this one doesn't have it, either because it was never installed or somebody pulled it out and used it for something else. Now I think we actually can pry up this RF shield because it's not really held down. There we go. Yeah, so here is our actual radio hardware. Quite a bit beefier on this board because it is dealing with higher voltages, RF energy, and uh, needs basically bigger components on it. Now I do recognize these guys, these big white blocks, as amplifier units. It looks like this one is designed for 800 to 900 megahertz, so yeah, that's a pretty common band for business band stuff like this. Not super useful for me. I know there is some ham radio stuff up in the 900 megahertz region, but I really have not used that much. I'm guessing that this is the transmitter antenna because all of the high power RF stuff is back here. This is probably the receiver antenna, and this block might be the receiver, although there could be something else in here. I'm not 100% sure where the receiver lives. Again, I am not a super expert at component level, uh, circuit board level design, so I can't tell you what all the bits here are. I'm assuming that's some kind of proprietary serial module. I don't know if there's an easy way to connect to this with anything else. Uh, we do have another connector here, but yeah, I have not really found much about this. I cannot find this exact model. I found some other data radio models. I found some of the boards that go in here, but I'm not sure if they go to this exact unit. So uh, yeah, at the moment, this is still kind of a mystery. We basically know what it is, what it's supposed to do, but as far as being able to use it, I'm kind of at a loss. I'm sure there are some good components in here, and if I were better at PCB design, I could unsolder some of this stuff, I could use it somewhere else, I could potentially use this whole board if I had a 900 megahertz radio application that I wanted to do something with. Um, it looks like nice stuff, it looks like it's pretty well designed and pretty robust, so yeah, I'm sure this was very expensive back in the 90s. But for now, I think I'm going to close it up again and put it aside. If anyone out there has an idea for what I could do with this, if you have any suggestions for can this be useful on a hobbyist level, is there something I can do with this, um, is it worth anything on eBay, I don't know. I Like I said, I can't find the exact same model and I can't find any matches for any of the numbers in here, so we know who made it, we don't know the model number, so I have no idea if this thing is worth a fortune or if it's just scrap metal. Let me know what you think in the comments and let me know if you want to see more mystery device teardowns and investigations. I can do more of these. There's a bunch more stuff like this at Axeman Surplus. If you live in the Twin Cities and you want to uh, have little mystery device investigations, Axeman Surplus is a great place to get mystery devices and not too expensive either. Like I said, this was basically $6, and it's given me 15 minutes of entertainment here, so I'd say that's worth $6. If nothing else, I could reuse the housing of this for some other radio project, and there are definitely some good components, the antenna jacks, the power jack. It's a well-made piece, and I'm sure I could come up with some other use, even for the case of this, even if I can't figure out a use for the internal components. I'm sorry we didn't get any deeper into this device because I couldn't find much about it online, but hopefully this was still at least a somewhat interesting video. Thank you to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.